Hello everyone, it's Maria here from Pepley Rose Paper Crafting. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I just wanted to um, make a card with the Darling Donkeys stamp set. Now this is a free celebration stamp set. So what that means is um, if you spend $90 or more from our current mini catalogue or our current annual catalogue, you're able to pick this stamp set for free and this is a Kling Mount rubber stamp. It is really really cute. So the donkey I'm going to be using today is this one over here. I'm also going to be using the brick and mortar 3D embossing folder. I'm using the stitched shapes dies. These come with um, four of each shape which is a circle, oval and squares. And I'm also using the layering circles dies. This comes with some just regular circles and some scallop circles. Also, I'm going to be using today the forever flourishing dies. These are absolutely beautiful. I love them. So these are the dies I'm going to be using today as well with this stamp set. So we'll get started on the project. And um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp that donkey. Now, um, what I have done is I have made a template of these um, stamp sets. Now, you're probably wondering, well, there are no dies. That's correct. So what I have done is I have used my Silhouette Cameo. Um, you can also use your Brother Scan and Cut to scan the stamped images. And I made some cut files. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my donkey over the cut file, if you can see that. And you can do this with dies as well, so it's not just limited to that. And I'm going to bring in my Stamparatus and my uh, magnet here. And I'm going to put this, take these away because you don't need the foam. So I'm going to put this right up in the corner there and I'm going to add my uh, magnet there. And I'll just make sure that this sits properly within the template. Um, what I did in advance was um, I cut a whole bunch of these out uh, once I scanned them. So I'll just make sure I've actually put it in the circle correctly. Not in the circle, sorry, in its... Um, it's like fitting a jigsaw puzzle. So as you can see, that fits perfectly there. So I'll let it sit there. Then I'm going to put this right in the corner and then I'm going to add my magnet there just to keep it in place and my stamp moved. So I'll make sure that it's right in there. Looks like it is. Yep, so I'm going to put the lid on it and I'm going to leave my template in there. And I've just got a clip lock bag full of cuts that I have made. So I've done it quite a few in advance so I can have them on hand. And I'm going to just get out the best cut that I've made. So that's this one over here and I've got a little extra piece there that needs to be taken away. There we go. So that's my cut in advance. So you can do this with your die cuts as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fit the... Um, the, the, the die cut in there and I'm going to grab my Memento Tuxedo Black ink which I forgot to bring out so bear with me I'm going to bring out my ink and then we'll stamp this baby down so just bear with me just brought over my Memento ink and I'm just going to ink up the stamp this is so cute I didn't think I would like the donkeys but I think they're adorable and I think this stamp set's really cute. You can use this for anything. So, let's stamp it down. And by the way, you can use that method um, where you make a template with your punches, your dies, and you know, also if you do your scanned images, you can do that as well. So, this has now been perfectly stamped. However, there's a little area that didn't uptake, so I'm just going to go back over it again and just stamp. And I'll just get a little bit more ink. Didn't uptake very well here, so I'll just stamp it again. 
and it stays put in there, so it makes you know re-stamping that much easier. So I'll just put a little bit of extra pressure there because it's right near the corner there. Uh, there's not a there's needs to be a little bit of a lift, and I forgot to put the, my little um, foam that I have made up. I should have put that underneath, but I forgot. Stamped much better. So now I'm going to take off the die, and it's perfectly stamped. Isn't that cute? I love the way that turned out. So I'm going to leave that die cut to the side for it to dry off a little bit. So I'm just going to clean off my stamp and take it off my stamparatus. I won't need it anymore. And I will put my template back in the stamp case so it just lives there the whole time. So I'll just put this away. Okay. So I like doing my housekeeping as I go because um, that way when I'm finished and I need to pack up, it's all done. So it's nice and easy. Okay, so this is a really cute stamp set. So if you haven't seen it up close and personal, it's got cute little stars there or little asterisks there. It says, hee haw, you're the best. Hey there friend and it's your birthday isn't it cute but of course feel free to add whatever other sentiments from other sets you may have and you can create a totally unique um, image there so with that drying off to the side I'm just going to bring in some purple posy cardstock I absolutely love this color so this is half an A4 sheet and then I've scored it in half again and that makes an A6 card base so I'll just fold and burnish the score line I've really stuck that down okay and then I have another piece of uh, purple posy cardstock this will just get layer over the top of the cardstock and what I did was um, I cut a quarter of an inch off up there and on the side so when you put it together you have a nice little border right round so that's what I've done there. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm actually going to emboss it with the brick and mortar embossing folder. But I will do that a little later on. What I want to do now is ink up some cardstock. So I'm just bringing in my uh, craft sheet, my non-stick craft sheet. This just protects my wet, uh, work surface and as well as um, you can be really messy on it and yeah it's good stuff I love it it's heat resistant and and I like that I can pack it away so that's why I've got this one because I don't have a dedicated craft space so I need to be a little bit inventive so what I want to do with a piece of uh, white cardstock is I'm going to ink up with a few combinations of inks because I want to inter, um, ink up some leaves. So I'm going to use um, shaded spruce, mossy meadow and pear pizzazz on this and I'm also going to be using gorgeous grape, purple posy and highland heather. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the greens and I'm just going to put ink pad to paper. So I'm just going to ink down like that using the tip then I'm just going to wipe this down. Then I'm going to use uh, Mossy Meadow. Doesn't have to be perfect. And not too dark because I want to be able to see the um, pear pizzazz underneath. Give that a wipe. See, that's why it's good having these kind of surfaces here. I'll just bring my microfiber cloth out and just give it a bit of a wipe. Okay, and then my shaded spruce. It's just a fun way to ink up and create your own um, colors, combinations for die cuts. It's so, such a good idea. I love that. Not unique to me, but I've seen it around. Okay, the next colour combinations I'm going to bring are Purple Posy, Highland Heather and Gorgeous Scrape. I'll start off with the lightest colour which is the Purple Posy. And I'll go on this side here so I don't contaminate my ink pads. 
Now, as you are aware, Purple Posey ink pad is not in stock. They retired it because they had issues with the colour. But I've had absolutely no issues with my ink pad. So um, it's just unfortunate now that it's, yeah, no longer in stock. But when you have these things, just hold on to them. And I'm just going to bring in my Highland Heather. And I'll just give that a bit of a swipe down. And I'm not going to do too much because I want to be able to um, leave enough colour there. So you can see the three shades of purple. And I've got the gorgeous grape now, which I'll go over the top very lightly as well. Okay, okay so that's all done. So I'll let that dry off a little bit. And we're finished now with the ink pads. Give this a bit of a wipe down and I'll just give that a wipe too and I'll just put it away so it dries off on its own a little bit more. Okay, so what I will do now is I'm going to grab my embossing machine. And what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to emboss my purple posy piece of cardstock and I'm going to grab my brick and mortar 3D embossing folder and I'm going to position it so that the bricks are going this way because it's going to be on a portrait uh, orientation so I'll just now pop this through spine first and I use my number four plate because this is a Stampin' Up! 3D embossing folder. So if you're not sure of the sandwich that you're using, it's the number one. Your embossing folder with the cardstock in it and the number four. And that's for the Stampin' Up! And it says here Stampin' Up! 3D embossing folders. So... That's how that turned out. Isn't that great? I love that. So I'll put that to one side. Then I'm going to bring in my number one, two, a cutting pad. Let me just grab the one that is the most dinged up one, and that's this one. I'm going to go on the other side. Yep. Okay. And I'm going to grab this and I'm going to bring in my Forever Flourishing dies and I'm going to cut out, let me think, hmm. I'm going to use this die over here. Now, I don't need to cut out the whole thing, so I just want to use that. I'll cut that out. Because I'm also going to snip it in certain places. I'll bring that back around so you can see how beautifully you cut out. And how cool that effect is. And so that's how that turned out. Isn't that beautiful? And I love how you can see the different shades of, of green. So I'm now going to bring this back and I'm going to use um, a different um, die cut. And I'm going to use this one over here. And I'm actually going to cut that out a couple of times. So I don't need the full lot. I'm just going to do that one there.
then I'm going to do the other side. Now I haven't really thought this through 100% so we'll see how it turns out. I tend to live a little dangerously when it comes to <laughs> um, my creations. Like I have a small idea but we'll see how it turns out. And so that's how that looks and that's super cool. Isn't that gorgeous? Love it. Okay. And I'll still keep this out. Because what I want to do with that is I'm going to cut out a scallop circle. And it's going to be in basic grey. So I'll just bring that out. So just... Um, Bear with me for a second. So this is the largest scallop circle we're going to use. And I'm going to bring in my basic grey cardstock. And I'm going to cut that out here. now cut out and I'm going to use a piece of um, whisper white cardstock and I'm going to cut out the largest circle now we'll see if I will use it all um, I'm not sure hundred percent but we'll see how it goes so I'll just bring out the largest circle now Oh no, actually, and I'm going to use the stitch shape, not that one. Pub on me. I like the stitch shape one. I like the little detail that it gives the stitched details. I think it's cute. All right. And then that is it with the die cutting. So you won't see any more of that now. Okay. I store mine like this. It takes up a lot less room. And I'll bring back my... So that's that done. And that's the stitching around it. Isn't that gorgeous? Alrighty, so we'll take all this stuff away. Just put that back in my trolley. Alright, so now that we have our little donkey, what I'm going to do is I'm going to colour that in and I'm going to be using my watercolour pencil, so I'll just bring that out. Oh, by the way, if you can hear my fan in the background, that's the noise that it's making at the moment. So I'm going to be using this. But I'll be having it off to the side because I'm filming from another location today and there's not a lot of room. So, so you'll be seeing me going off to the side a little bit. And I'm just going to bring out my Copic Colourless Blender. If I can find it. it out. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you down a little closer. So I'm going to just, uh, yeah, focus you in a little bit more. And I'm also, I've also got a piece of scratch uh, copy paper. Um, and that's just to scribble off any colour that may be left on there. So I'm just going to use all Stampin' Up! equivalent colours. So to start off with, I'm going to just paint the leaf and the stem of that flower so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on some music um, make this go a little bit faster and then um, I'll see you around when I'm done okay so just bear with me
just finished now colouring in my image. It is so adorable though, isn't it cute? I love it. Alright, so we're going to bring in the card base. Um, and I'm not 100% sure how this is going to look, so I'm just going to be experimenting. So we're going to put the circle and that there. We'll put the donkey here. Oh, isn't that cute already? And I'm um, going to put this down here. And that up here. Oh, wow, that looks so good. And with this, I'm just going to grab my scissors. Just got to find them. Sorry. There they are. And I'll bring in my tweezers as well because I will need those. And I'm just going to cut into that die cut. So I'm just going to cut out some sprigs. Um, I'm going to put that sort of here to kind of reference the stem and that. I'll see how I go with that and then I'll just bring another sprigs, a couple of sprigs here. I might just do it like this and like that and I'll just cut just trim that off a little bit because it was joined um, doesn't have to be perfect um, so I'm just going to put that around here Okay, I think this is going to look good like that. I think I really like that and like that. Just to kind of break up the purple a bit. And with this one, we're going to break that off as well. So with this one, I can go a small one here and a larger one about there. What do you think? I'll just bring that up close. I think that turned out cute. So we'll just stick everything down. So I'll just grab my glue. I've got some um, PVA glue. I always get questions regarding this. And um, it's just cheapy glue that I find at um, Spotlight or at Lincraft, which is uh, the equivalent of Michael's or Joanne's here in uh, Australia. And uh, I'm just going to put that on the scallop circle there and just have the scallops just peeking out. And um, I think what I'll do is... I'll pop this here like that yes all right so I'll put a little bit of glue just on the bottom here and I'm not sticking it down just yet so like that put a little bit on the bottom here like that. I'll stick that down. But I'm not going to stick down all of the leaves, just where the stems are, just to give it some stability. So like so. that there I think that looks good like that pop that here too so I'll stick that underneath now you can use this card for any occasion um, you can use this as even as a Valentine's if you want to because it's got the rose it's so cute so I'll just add that here Make sure it sticks out more towards the bottom there. So I'll just put a bit of glue here. Sort of intertwine it a little bit. And then I'll put one down here as well. I think this turned out super cute. 
I like it. All right, so I'll stick this whole panel down now. And I always put glue just on the edges so that if I change my mind and I need to rescue the card base, I can just put one of my spatulas underneath and just kind of just pry it off on the edges only and it works out a treat every time. It's so good. All right, so I really love the way this one turned out. It's really cute. Now with this one, it sticks out a little too much on the edge there. So I'm going to try and get it off. It hasn't stuck down 100% yet, so that's good. So just take that off. There we go. Didn't even stick down. Isn't that great? Oh, I love it when that works out like that. <laughs> okay, so I'll put this one here. A bit closer, yeah. All right. So now I will stick this down here, just in the middle. Like so. And then I'm going to grab my donkey, and that fits perfectly in that large circle. And I'll put some dimensionals on him or her, whatever you want. Looks like a him to me. Never throw away the edges, they are so handy. Um, when it comes to doing little bits and pieces like this. So I think that's enough dimensionals on that little donkey. So I'll just take off all of the backings. You can add whatever sentiment you wish on it. So it's really flexible. You can say hello or I love you, or, or um, <clears throat> thank you even, um, whatever you want. It's really, really flexible. So that is my finished card for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, all the products you've seen today, the Darling Donkey stamp set, the dies that I used are all available in my online store at pebblyrosepapercrafting.stampinup.net. And um, if you place an order of $90 or more before shipping, you are able to pick this up for free. So just a recap of this, um, of what I used. So I've used the 3D brick and mortar embossing folder. That one. The Forever Flourishing dies. They're available in the annual catalogue. That's the annual catalogue. Celebration. And these two are just... The stuff you find in your annual catalogue. But you can order from all two catalogues and you can still receive that for free. And um, these ones, all available for you to purchase right now. Thank you so much for watching my uh, video today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please doesn't, don't hesitate to leave me a comment in the um, section below this video. Um, you can also contact me through my Facebook page and also through my online store at pebblyrosepapercrafting.stampinup.net. And um, I hope you like it. And here's a close-up. So cute. Thanks for watching. And I can't wait to see you again next time. Bye.